also use that the notation here. We have uh, found that the critical ratio is uh, 0 0.77 and we have identified the value in the table which is closest to that one. Remember, 50% uh, are below the expected value, which here is uh, assumed to be zero. So we are looking for the value, which is 0 0.77 minus 50, which is 0 0.27. And we found that one to be here, which is the closest one, 0 0.2703, <coughs> which gives a value of t of what? Try again. <laughs> Zero point seven, and the hundreds are in the row, and 0 0.04, which is 0 0.74. So here, the value of C that corresponds to this one is 0 0.74. And now we have a formula to calculate the exact value of the order size. So we can use the formula which gives the optimal value of Q as the expected value, mu, plus the value of C <coughs> multiplied by the standard deviation. This is the formula to use to calculate and find the optimal value of Q, the order size that will give you most profit in this situation where you have a normal distribution and you have an expected value of 11.73 and a standard deviation of 4.74. So this is 11.73. which means that you are moving the normal distribution from the value of zero and up to 0 0.73. But the curve will remain the, s the same. And we have 0 uh, 0.70, well, we have a standard deviation of 4.74. We have to add 4.74 multiplied by 0 0.74, which is the C value, and this gives you an optimal order size of 15.24, which we can round to be 15. So here we will assume, or we, we have found that if this is the case, if every uh, of the other parameter values are correct, the normal distribution is correct, expected value is, the, uh, is correct, and the standard deviation is correct, then we should order 15 units of this weekly magazine every week. And usually you will have some left because the average demand is 11 or almost uh, 12. Uh, but some weeks you also will have a stock out because the maximum value was 22. And uh, according to the normal distribution here, we have 23% probability of getting a stock out since we are uh, here using a critical ratio of 0 0.77, which means that we should find the policy, in this case 15, which will meet the demand in 77% of the situation. So this is now the formula here to identify the optimal value of Q. Now I will uh, look at uh, one well, old prob problem from, from an old exam in a, in a similar course where you are not using the, di the normal distribution but rather a discrete probability distribution. This is exam from 2006 and at, at least this part is uh, still a part of the, the curriculum in, in the course. So here First, we are talking about well, two models of inventory control subject to uncertain demand. One is the so-called new spoil model, which we have now uh, shown here. The other is the lot size reorder point, or the QR model, uh, or models. There are several of them, but we will later look at one 
QR model, which will find the order size and the re reorder point simultaneously. Uh, and first here you should compare the two model concepts and what are the main differences and at least the main difference is that I with the Newsboy model you are not allowed or you cannot store inventory because the, the, uh, the item will lose all or at least most of its value if it's stored to the next period. But in the QR or lot size reorder point models it is possible to store the inventory and it will have the same inventory at least within a, a reasonable uh, deviation of, of, of time if you are storing it to the next period. So this is the main difference here. But then in problem B we will look at one particular news, so-called newsboy problem. And this is a salesman of Christmas tree only selling trees the day before Christmas, only the 23rd of, uh, of December. And he has some experience that he will sell either zero or up to nine trees this day. And he don't know much anymore about the distribution of the different quantities and allocates a discrete distribution probability with equal probability of out all the outcomes. So here you have 10 possible outcomes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And each of them will have a 10% probability of happen. So the question here is how many trees will he sell on an average day before Christmas? That's the first question. And then on an average day, we should find the value of each possible outcome and multiply by the probability of that outcome. <coughs> So let's now find the, um, the probability or the si sales of an average day, uh, which means that the this is also the expected demand, which is the sum of all possible outcomes multiplied by 10% or divided by 10. 1 divided by 10 multiplied 0 plus 1 plus 2 and up to 9. These are the possible outcomes. These are the number of uh, the number of, uh, of possible outcomes here. You have a discrete, not a normal distribution, but here you have a discrete distribution, which means that you have a given probability for each possible outcomes. And this is 45 divided by 10, which is 4.5. Also a mathematical value, because you won't sell four and a half Christmas tree. Either you sell four or five or any other number. But still, this is the average or expected demand as an, accept, uh, a, as an uh, mathematical value. 4.5 Christmas trees. If you have the same probability of all the 10 possible outcomes. Then suppose that the salesman will buy trees for 100 kroner and sell them for 300 kroner. Then the purchase price is 100. The sales price is uh, 300. And the salesman has no agreement of return and will lose all money used on unsold trees. So here the return value is zero. Okay, let's now find the overage and the underage cost. CU, underage cost, the loss of profit. If you are not able to sell a tree which is demanded. This is now the sales price minus the purchase price and it is 200. If you don't have an, a tree available when someone wants to buy it, you will lose 200 kroner in profit. And then the CO, the overage cost, are defined to be the loss of money if you're buying too much. C 
cost of overage. You have bought one Christmas tree, which you are not able to sell. The price is 100, the return price is zero. So this is, of course, 100, the P minus R. And then we can calculate here the, the critical ratio because, well, uh, how to the calculations are, well, at least to this point, it will be same. Either you have a normal distribution or if you have a discrete distribution with a certain probability per outcome. So here, the critical ratio is the Cu divided by Cu plus Co, 200 divided by 200 plus 100, which is 0 0.67. But now we don't have the normal distribution table to look up, so we have to create our own table. And then let's have a look at the possible demands, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Each of them with a possible outcome well, a, a probability for the outcome of 10%, which means that the small f of, uh, uh, of the, yeah, well, let's, let's call it, yeah, let's call it t, that's okay, uh, where t is the, the probability here. Uh, let's rather call it Q, where Q is the order size, because we also sh should have one more row where we are calculating the cumulative uh, demand, which we'll, we will use to find the exact value of Q. So here you have 10% probability for each possible outcome. Like this. And now let's find the cumulative probability, the probability of an outcome which is not higher than each of these values here. Capital F out of Q, where Q is what we actually want to, to decide here. And an outcome of zero has 10% probability. So if we are buying no trees at all, then it will be a 10% probability that this is correct. You, you will not lose any money. If we are buying one tree, you have a probability of not getting a stock out on the two outcomes of either zero or one, a total of 20%. If we are buying two trees, you have a probability of not getting a stock out of either 0, 1 and 2, which each has 10% probability, 0 0.3. And so we can continue for the whole table here. And if we are buying 9 threes, you will always have, uh, you, you will never have a stock out, because this is in this distribution, it is not. You have, n you have nine possible customers uh, and you don't have any more. So either all uh, nine will, uh, will buy a three or some choose not to buy a three this year. So now we will look at this cumulative probability and choose the one, the value which is closest to the critical ratio. 0 0.67 and here 0 0.7 is the closest one. So the conclusion here, you should buy six trees, which means that in 70% of the situations, you will not have a stock out. It can happen that either seven, eight, or nine of the customers or, uh, want, want to, uh, to buy a tree, and then you will have a stock out. But this is the policy that will give you 
highest profit over time, which is the probability which is closest to the critical ratio, which is found as the, the CU, the underage cost, divided by the sum of the underage and the overage cost. Uh, yeah, we are also asked about the profit the salesman will have on an average day before Christmas. I will not use much time on that. There, we should uh, create a new table and look at the profit for each of the possible situations. Uh, we see that if you have a demand of zero and you are buying six trees, you will lose the cost of these six trees. I should maybe at least start to show that, but, but this is... Uh, well, uh, uh, create a table of the demand, which now will be 0 and up to 9. Then create a table of the income. And of course, um, if you are not selling at any trees, you will have an income of zero. If you are selling one tree, you will have an income of 300. If you are selling two trees, you will have an income of 600 because you will sell the, the trees for a cost uh, for, for a price of 300. Then you should also have a table of the cost, which is uh, the cost of six trees. This is the policy. So this will always be 600. And 600. Um, and, of course, the income, if you are selling nine trees, will be uh, nine. Uh, you're selling, uh, yeah, well, the income, if the demand is uh, nine trees, will be still, you have only bought six trees. That will mean that the income will be uh, 1,800. Because you are selling all the six trees, but you will not have any more income for those customers who are not able to, uh, who wanted to buy a tree, but are not able to buy because you had only six on stock. And similar, then it's very easy to find the profit, which here will be minus 600, minus 300, zero, and then 1800 minus 600, which is 1200. This will be the profit in each of the possible situations, and each of them will have a probability of 10%. So the probability multiplied by the profit will give you a number. <coughs> And to sum all these numbers together will give you a total. So here, profit multiplied by the probability will be minus 60, minus 30, 0, and here 120, and similar here. A total profit will then be the sum in this column, which will give a total of 570. So this is the pro uh, expected profit in such a situation here, where you are calculating the profit for all the possible outcomes and finding <coughs> 500, uh, uh, a total of 570. And before we continue, let's also try to answer the last question. An expert on newsboy models claim that if the salesman can get an agreement with his supplier of returning unsold trees to a price like the purchase price. Then the decision problem will be much simpler. And we remember that we had a, s a purchase price of 100. We had a sales price of 300. And if 
the R return price is increased from 0 up to 100, we will have an overage cost of 0. 100 minus 100. You will never lose money. Which means that the critical ratio will be the CU divided by CU plus 0, which always will be 1. And that means you will never lose money on a tree. You can return it if you don't sell it. And then, of course, you should order the maximum amount. You should order nine trees. In 10% of the situations, you are able to sell all of them. Otherwise, you can return the trees you have not um, sold to, to the uh, who, one who delivers uh, trees to you, and then you will not lose money at all. So here, choose the maximum uh, maximum possible amount, and it will be here, as we mentioned, it will be optimal to buy as many trees as possible. So this is, of course, correct by a correct observation by this expert on newsboy models. Okay, I have several examples. I will not go through all examples on the lectures, but I will upload at least one more uh, example on um, on a discrete distribution like this, you have an exact probability for each outcome. This is problem 5.8 in the textbook. I will upload the solution on Frontier after this lecture. We'll not go through it here, but now we will have a look at another problem where you are back to the normal distribution situation, which is described in chapter or, or in um, as problem 5.10 in the textbook. Let's see which page. Yeah, 510, page uh, 264, and this is about a car dealer which sells an imported car. Once every three, three months, he get a shipment. And when I'm erasing the blackboard, you can read through the, the text here. So we are back to the normal distribution situation. So we need this table. Uh, and we can read through the text here that you have a car dealer get a shipment every third month. And you can make an emergency shipment, which means that you are able to get a delivery even if you have not ordered enough. If, if you find out in one period in this case, a three-month period, that you need more cars, you can make an emergency shipment. But of course, this will be more costly. And then you can have it in two weeks, and buyers are willing to wait for these two weeks uh, without any extra, extra cost. Uh, but if the waiting time is more than two weeks, they will generally go uh, elsewhere before the next three-month shipment is, is due. And you have some kind of uh, well experience here that it appears that the demand for this car over a three month interval is normally distributed with a mean of 60 and a variance of 36. So let's now try to find the values of the parameters. We have a mean or a mu value or a expected demand, which is 60. And you have a variance of 36, and we know that the 
standard deviation sigma will be the square root of the variance, which was 36, which means that the standard deviation is 6. So these are now the two values that we need. We have a normal distribution. We have an expected demand of 60. So here, instead of 0, we have to just displace this curve to the expected demand of 60. And we have a standard deviation of 6. And then we are also given the cost for one year is given to be $500. So that is the holding cost, which is said to be 500. And also we have um, what we here call the emergency shipment, which is now 250 per car. So the emergency uh, shipment, which we, well, what should we denote that? Um, Two hundred and fifty. So to store one car in one period, it will cost you five hundred, and to have an emergency shipment, get it delivered without the regular delivery time, it will cost you 250. So then the question in A, how many cars should Happy Henry, the car dealer, be purchasing every third month? And now we have periods of three months. So this is not a daily or a weekly basis, but you have periods of three months. You have regular deliveries every third month, and then we can treat that, that as a um, um, as a, a regular, uh, well, as a period uh, in, in as a, a newsboy-like <coughs> problem, and use the models we have learned so far. So here, what is the, the overage and what is the underage cost? And then we know that this should, of course, be per year. So we are given that the holding cost, cost of storing a car, is 500 per year. Which means that if you are storing one car for a full three month period without selling it, it will cost you 500 divided by four. Since one year consists of four three month periods. So the overage cost here, is said to be 500 divided by 4, which is 125. The cost of ordering too many cars will be now the cost of storing a car during this period, which is 125 for a three-month period. Then the underage cost in this case the CU <coughs> will be the same as the emergency shipment underage cost. The cost of not being uh, able to deliver when you have a demand. The cost of underestimating the market. And then you, instead of losing the whole profit for this car, you will lose the money for the emergency shipment, which probably will be much uh, uh, much less than the total profit of selling a car. So here, emergency shipment and the underage cost will be 250. So then it should be pretty easy when we are, uh, well, uh, reading all information in this problem and interpret uh, interpreting it as uh, it was a newsboy problem and then calculating the different parameters here, the overage and the underage cost. Find the critical ratio as usual. Now we have identified these values. Cu divided by sum of Co and Cu, which is 250, divided by 375. This will be 0 0.67. Critical ratio. 0 
and then we can use this value to identify the C value here. We remember 50% are still below the expected value here. So now we are looking for the value of 0 0.67 minus 0 0.15, which is 0 0.17. Here. And a value of 0 0.17 will be found with a C value of 0 0.4. So the C value here is 0 0.44. And with a C value of 0 0.44, we can also quite easy find the value for the optimal order size, so the Q value here, the optimal Q will be the expected sales plus the C value multiplied by the standard deviation. Expected sales will be 60 plus 0 0.44 multiplied by the standard deviation, which is 6. And this will be approximately 62.6, .6, which can be rounded to be 63, rounded to the closest integer value. So the policy here is to order 63 items every three month period. 63 cars. On an average period you will sell 60, but you have the possibility of emergency uh, shipments, uh, which means that uh, you can, when you have a higher uh, demand in one period, you can get a delivery uh, pretty fast, at least fast enough for, for the normal customer. Uh, so you will be able to place emergency orders, but still you should have a few more cars on stock than you expect to sell. So here 63 is the order size and the average demand is 60. So let's now try to look at the, the next uh, sub-problem here. Repeat the calculations. Assuming that excess demand are back ordered from one three month period to the next, and then assume a loss of goodwill cost of 100 for customer having to wait until the next, uh, uh, the next three month period. Uh, and also you have a cost of $50 for bookkeeping expenses. Which means that here, you will not have the emergency shipments, but you will rather have a loss of goodwill. You assume that, you are, that customers are willing to wait, but they will be a bit dis dissatisfied. And uh, now the CU value will have to be recalculated as the loss of goodwill estimated to 100 and the bookkeeping expenses, which is 50. So now the CU under each cost, instead of an emergency shipment, you will use the value of 150. Which means that now the critical ratio will be the under each cost of 150 divided by the sum of the underage and the overage cost, 150 plus the overage uh, cost, which still is 125, means uh, 150, 175 to 275, which will give us a critical ratio here of 0 0.5454.
and now with a critical ratio of 0 0.5454 we have to go into the normal distribution table and find the corresponding C value. And now, since we should subtract 0 0.5 here, we are left with 0 0.0454. 0 0.0454 around here, a very low C value. 0. Point, we take the closest one, which is actually this one at a C value of 0 0.11. Means here and then the optimal order size will change to be still 60 is the expected demand. Uh, the standard deviation is still the same, 6, and now 0 0.11 will be the C value, which is here 60. 0.66, which is rounded to be 61. So here in this case, when the underage costs are reduced, you don't have to deal with an emergency shipment at a cost of 250, but you should rather keep track of the uh, of the, the back ordering and have some well, dissatisfied customers, which you estimate to a cost of 100. So now the underage cost in this case will be lower, which means that you should not have so many items on stock because you will lose less money if you don't if you're not able to to deliver to the uh, to the customers. So instead of using 63 as we did in the first example, we are now ordering only 61, which is only one car more than the expected demand. And also try to solve the last question before we take a break, number C. Repeat the calculations, assuming that when Happy Henry is out of stock for this car, the customer will purchase the cars elsewhere. In this case, assume that the cars cost Henry, the cost Henry an average, it will be a cost of $10,000. And sell for an average of $13,000. And now we should ignore the loss of goodwill cost for these calculations. So here, rather calculate the loss of profit as the underage cost. Overage cost is still the same, the cost of storing a car over one full period. But now the underage cost instead of an emergency shipment or some cost of keeping track of back orders, you will assume that you are losing the sales. The customer will buy the car in another, at another car dealer. So now the underage cost will be the loss of profit and the sales price was 13,500. The purchase price was 10,000, so you will lose 3,000. 500, which is a much higher value than we have seen so far. Underage cost, now 13,500, which means that you should usually, well, you should, well, you can directly assume that you need to order more cars because the loss of profit is so high compared to the cost of storing inventory. So now, with an underage cost of 3,500, the critical ratio will be 3,500 divided by 3,500 plus 125, 3625, which is approximately 96%. 96.55%. And now we can see that this is a much higher critical ratio than we have seen earlier. Go into the normal distribution table and try to find the value which now should be 0 0.4655 since 50% are below 
the expected value. And this should now be found approximately here, four, six, five, six, which is very close to the value we are looking for. Now that Z value is 1.82, 1.82. And the optimal Q, optimal order size, will be 60 plus standard deviation of six, this is still the same, multiplied by 1.82 which will give us an optimal order size in this case of approximately 71 cars. So here, if we are assuming that we are losing the whole profit of a lost sales, we have to order 71 cars, which will meet the demand in 96.55% of the situation. So here you will have a very low probability of getting a stock out because this C value will be much higher than we have seen so far. Okay, enough about new spoil problem. Now we should take a break and then, then in 15 minutes we will continue with the other type of stochastic or uncertain problems which is the so-called QR or the lot size reorder point problems. question for the example it's the first uh, question we don't really understand uh, which um, is d the, the variance okay if you put it yeah because i we are in sense that we calculate d mm -hmm. with uh, 11 seven, um, so 73 this, uh, problem here. this is the last year's demand. yeah 52 weeks yeah. And then you can calculate the average demand, mm. which is the sum of all these numbers, which is to be uh, 600, 600 something, yeah. yeah. And divide by 52. Yeah. This is the average demand, okay. 11.72. Average. Yeah. Okay. And then to find the variance, okay. we know that this is the average demand. Okay. And then we should check 15 okay. minus 11.73 is 3.27 to okay. the power of 2. Okay. And that is what is described here. Yeah, but what? And then we check the next one. Okay. 19 minus 11.73 mm. to the power of 2. And we sum all these variations. Mm. So this is the definition of the variance. And the definition of the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Yeah, but um, if, if the exam come and, and you you wrote only the answer, yeah. and then I have to write all the times uh, well, for uh, 50 number for nah, uh, you 52 won't, You number. won't get such problems on the exam. Okay. You will get up, uh, you will get information about the standard deviation, but, but you should know about it because this okay. should be known from statistics. Okay, and then I have a question. In yeah. the formula, was it a one or an i? One. A one. Yeah, one there, uh, or, or or what is in the denominator is actually the, the sum here. Okay. So this is 1 divided by the, the number of uh, okay. uh, what number of, of mm. measures or weeks mm. and multiplied by this sum here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's it.
Ich werde nicht, ich habe auch so viel Geld. 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 Ich habe auch so